This is some information on multi-component vapor liquid equilibrium. So first of all, we're gonna talk about why it's important, and then we're gonna review Raoult's law. We're also gonna cover and introduce Henry's law. Uh, we're gonna go over some dew point calculations, bubble point calculations, and then finally finish off with a flash calculation. Okay, so why is it important um, you know, in oil and gas? It's important in, for example, distillation. Uh, there are 40,000 distillation columns in the United States alone. It accounts for 6% of all energy use in the U.S. Okay, and with those 40,000 uh, columns, separation columns. And so the, at the heart of these separation columns is this vapor-liquid equilibrium. Okay, so we're trying to separate uh, lighter components like alkanes uh, from heavy components like heavy oil or gas oil and then they go into a variety of different products. Now you can see as the carbon number increases the uh, the vapor pressure is uh, less the um, and those will be at the bottom of the column. Okay and so here's just a, another graphical representation of that distillation column. You can see all the products that are made from crude oil for example. Okay, so distillation column trays, you have uh, vapor going up, and then you have a uh, mole fraction in the vapor as well, and the liquid is coming down. Okay, you might have a weir here just to have some hold up, a level here, as the vapor uh, percolates up through this column. So you contact the liquid with the, uh, the vapor, and, uh, and then separation occurs as you drive, uh, you heat, uh, add heat, at the bottom and then you cool uh, you take away the heat okay at the top um, and uh, this drives the separation okay so uh, this is just a, a cutaway of a fractional distillation column uh, you know with, with crude oil uh, you may have uh, bubble caps um, you, this is your down comer in case the liquid that goes over that level and then the vapor is bubbling up uh, through this Okay, so here's just a cutaway of some distillation columns, for example. Here are some of the trays. And, and so you can see these are, are quite sophisticated. The geometry is sophisticated to encourage contact, to encourage uh, more efficient uh, separation and uh, vapor-liquid equilibrium at each tray. Okay, so you might have bubble caps, for example, or um, you know these other uh, configurations for distillation columns. Let's, let's just talk about Henry's Law. Uh, really briefly, Henry's law um, is uh, you know kind of like the Raoult's law. Okay, this is Raoult's law here. When x1 is large, but when xi is small, when it gets to very very low concentrations, uh, we're going to use an alternative form. Okay, so instead of uh, this vapor pressure here, we're going to use a Henry's law constant. So that's going to relate the the mole fraction that's in the liquid phase. Okay, so that's mole fraction um, in the liquid. Um, this is just going to be a constant that we're going to look up for different uh, uh, species. It's going to be a function of, of temperature, so there may be some, so not just a constant, but a function of temperature there as well. And that's going to relate to the partial pressure of that species in the gas phase. Okay, so tables uh, are available, but um, you know, in the book that we're using, they're not available. Okay, so here is, uh, for example, from Wikipedia. Okay, and we are, you know, we have different components. Here's CO2, for example. Uh, now that's of interest for this next um, example problem. Okay, so how much CO2 is in a soft drink? Let's just say we have a, a soda bottle. Okay, one of these soda bottles. Uh, this is at 298 Kelvin. We, we maybe uh, you know, hooked up a pressure gauge to it and found that the pressure is uh, about 1.25 atmospheres. So we want to calculate the concentration of CO2 in the liquid and we're going to do that with this, this Henry's Law. Okay, so um, I'm just going to put this, put this uh, table back on here. Okay, so we have um, you know different forms uh, for these constants. Okay, so if you use this constant in this row, then uh, it, it's going to be P 
which is the partial pressure of the gas above the solution, uh, divided by C. Okay, so let me just zoom in a little bit on this. And that's going to be the uh, amount or concentration of the gas in the solution in moles per liter. Let's just use um, this third column. Okay, I want to use this third column for this calculation. And, and uh, so we have uh, the, the pressure, the partial pressure of CO2 um, is going to be equal to KHPX um, times X. Okay, so this is the concentration of uh, CO2 in the liquid. That's going to be in a mole fraction. Uh, so let's just go ahead and solve for that. Okay, so X. CO2 equals PCO2 uh, divided by KHPX. Uh, okay, so we were given that the pressure is 1.25 atmospheres, um, but that could be, um, let's just assume there's no air in the headspace of that. When they packaged it, they just did uh, CO2 and the, the liquid. Okay, so, um, so all of this is going to be from, here's your bottle, here in this uh, vapor space here, okay, this is the liquid down below. In the vapor, this is going to be CO2 and maybe water. Okay, so the, from the water, we can get the partial pressure of the water at, um, for example, 298, just looking that up in the table, and that is very small at that temperature. Okay, so that means that we have almost no water in the, uh, in the vapor space, almost all of this 1.25 atmospheres is gonna be from the CO2. Okay, so let's just assume that. Uh, we got 1.25 atmospheres, and then this is in atmospheres, fortunately, and so let's just look up that. There's our Henry's Law constant, 163 times 10 to the fourth. So that means that X CO2 if we just divide those two, that's going to be 0 .00015. Okay, so not a lot of CO2 in our um, in our soft drink. Okay, so um, terms we should know. Uh, VLE is vapor liquid equilibrium, and uh, bubble point is a bubble point calculation. Okay, so any VLE calculation where Xi is known. Um, in this case, T or P is known. We're going to find Yi and P or T. Okay, so the other one that wasn't known. Okay, now dew point calculation is any VLE calculation where Yi is known. And so T or P is known, and we're going to find Xi and then the other P or T that wasn't known, okay? Now for flash calculation, this is going to be a VLE calculation where the feet composition, ZI, is known. Um, okay, so we're just going to introduce another variable here, okay? So in that case, we have uh, ZI, those are our compositions coming in, and then our vapor is going to be the YI, and then the liquid is going to be XI. Okay, and then in this case, we also have a V, that's going to be our, our molar flow rate of the gas, and then L is going to be the molar flow rate of our liquid. And uh, we need to find the XIs, YIs, L, and V. Okay, so um, let's just look at multi-component vapor liquid equilibrium. Okay, so if XI is known, this is our bubble point calculation. And so this is just a general strategy for solving these. If the total pressure is given, then we guess T in order to be able to satisfy uh, this equation. But if T is given, this is very easy now. If we just plug that in, this is going to be a function of temperature. So we can just plug that in and calculate our total pressure. And then our mole fractions in the vapor are just going to be solved with uh, Raoult's law. Okay, now if yi is known, that's our dew point calculation. So we're going to use um, the relation, the summation of xi equals 1. And then uh, in this case, we also have if p total is given. Okay, just like here, you know, p total is given or t is given. But in this case, if p total is given, we'll guess the t. 
to satisfy uh, this equation. And if t is given, then we'll just calculate the p total here. Okay, this is a function of temperature, and this is a function of temperature as well. And then we get the yi, or, or sorry, then we use um, you know this to get our xi's. Okay, so um, okay, so that is uh, dew point and bubble point calculations. Okay, I recommend that uh, you, know, you write this in your book. Okay, um, and so here is a flash calculation. Now, in, in this case, maybe the pressure and temperature are known, or you could have the pressure known and the yi's known as well. But you know, most I think most common is this, where pressure and temperature are known. So we have a flow rate coming in, okay, that's known. And then often uh, the mole fraction coming in is known as well. It's gonna separate into vapor and liquid. And then this is a like moles per second coming out. And then these are mole fractions, okay, mole fraction. Um, but these are uh, liquid and this is the vapor. Okay, and that's also a mole fraction as well. Okay, um, so here's a flash calculation procedure. Um, what we do is if, if this is known, okay, uh, and let's say we just have two species and pressure and temperature are known, then we use Raoult's law for each species, okay? We use our summation of Y1 plus Y2 equals one, and just substitute it in to eliminate Y2. Um, and then we add these equations together to get uh, this total pressure equation equals the partial, the vapor uh, fraction, or sorry, the, uh, the mole fraction in the liquid times the vapor pressure of that liquid. And then this is times the mole fraction of X2 times the vapor pressure of, uh, X, of the second compound as well. Then we'll solve for X1 in this case, we'll know, we know temperature, so we will know these two. And all we don't know is the x1. So we'll go ahead and solve for x1, and then we'll get our y1. And then we can use mole balances to get um, v and l. We need to do a total mole balance, and then we need to do one of the species mole balances. So that is two equations and two unknowns. Okay, so it's just, uh, you could either also solve this as a series of set of equations as well, or you can solve them, you know, with this uh, procedure uh, just for these two species. Okay, so let's just do the sample flash calculation. So we have uh, these two compounds. I'm just going to call this uh, compound one and compound two. Okay, uh, you have ethanol and ethyl uh, chloride. Okay, and, uh, and then we're separating that. Um, now our flash is at two atmospheres and 85 degrees Celsius. And then we just know that at 85 degrees Celsius, we can look this up or calculate it from Antoine equations um, or look it up in a book. Uh, but these, this is the, these are the vapor pressures of the two compounds. Okay, and then we know that our total pressure is at uh, 1520 millimeters of mercury that is um, the same as uh, two atmospheres. Okay, so we wanna find um, the liquid flow rate, the molar flow rate, the vapor uh, molar flow rate, and then all of the yi's and xi's. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with our mole balance um, and our um, ethanol balance as well. Okay, so we have our overall mole balance, we'll just assume a basis of you know one mole uh, coming in, and uh, and then we do the balance on the ethanol as well. Okay, so we have um, you know all of these are going to be unknown. Okay, so we can't solve these right now, um, but we're going to also use Raoult's law um, to relate the liquid concentration or molar fraction mole fraction to the vapor mole fraction. Okay, and. Uh, and then we add these two equations together to get this total equation. Now we know this one, this one, the pressure. The only thing that we don't know in this equation is, is the mole fraction of ethanol in the liquid. Okay, so we solve for that, and that's gonna be uh, equal to 0.9. So 
our other compound is going to be 0.1. And uh, so let's use Rowlett's law now. Um, and so that's going to give us these mole fractions in the in the vapor. Now if we use the mole balances, okay, we can solve for V and L. And there are our V and L values. Okay, so actually let me go back. I think I did that a little bit too fast. So here's our V and L. Uh, v and L, there's our... Um, vapor mole fractions and here are our liquid mole fractions. So this this coming in at these temperatures and these pressures it means that about 95 percent is going to be vapor and about five percent is going to be liquid and um, in the vapor you're going to be uh, you know more concentrated in the ethanol but we also fed that in in a, in a greater fraction, so we slightly concentrated it in terms of the second compound. Okay, um, and but in our liquid, now this is where a lot of the separation is, is occurring. In our liquid, we had, um, you know, very, very, uh, a lot of ethanol and very little of our ethyl chloride. So um, it wasn't very much coming out, but it was more concentrated in the, in the ethanol. Okay, so that's our sample flash uh, calculation. Um, now what I want to do is just show the same thing. You know, we can either solve this in, in this procedure, but for, for large scale systems, it may be, um, you know, a little bit difficult to, uh, to you know, calculate these in a, in a particular order. Um, you know, so we're going to show how to solve all of these equa equations simultaneously. So I'm just going to come to uh, apmonitor.com and then click on solve optimization problems and then here at the interface we're just going to go ahead and type in our equations for our flash uh, calculation okay so we have some parameters uh, some things that, that we know are that are fixed okay there's our um, total pressure so I'm just going to put total pressure um, and then I'm just going to use uh, one is going to be for the for the ethanol and um, that vapor pressure at uh, the temperature that we prescribed was um, it's going to be 985.1 millimeters of mercury, and then P2 is um, you know, so this is much more volatile, and that's why in the liquid phase we didn't have um, much of the uh, in the, of the P2. Okay, so parameters and then variables. Okay, so we're going to have V. We're going to have L. Those are the vapor and liquid molar flow rates. We have Y1, we have Y2, and then X1 and X2. Now let's uh, do our uh, go ahead and construct our equations. We had the overall mole balance. Um, we had the species balance for the ethanol. Okay, there's our species balance for the ethanol. And then uh, let's go ahead and do our Raoult's law for ethanol. Okay, and then the same thing for the ethyl chloride. Okay, and and then we also had just the summation of those two was equal to one. Okay, so for both the just the summation of the mole fractions is going to equal one. Okay, so there we have our. Um, our problem and uh, just six equations, six unknowns. And if I click uh, this green button up here, um, then it's going to solve the uh, optimization problem. And then if I scroll down, I'll see my solution uh, and it gives the same answers as we just calculated. Okay, so, so let me go back and just review uh, briefly what we did um, today. We um, okay, so we uh, talked about uh, multi-component vapor liquid equilibrium. We talked about you know its application to distillation and why that's important. Uh, we briefly covered uh, Henry's law. We did a CO2 and soft drink example, and then we talked about uh, bubble point calculations, dew point calculations, and flash calculations. Uh, and with a sample flash uh, calculation, solving that sequentially and then simultaneously as well.